Okay guys, welcome to my next uh, footwear tutorial using Rhino and Grasshopper. This one's going to be mostly Grasshopper. Uh, if you looked at my last tutorial, uh, it was about how to use a sphere as a starting point to model a single surface uh, in the shape of a, a midsole or an outsole. Uh, so if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and go back and watch that one and follow along and that will get you all primed to do this one. I've got here our midsole slash outsole surface uh, that we modeled in the last tutorial and it is all ready to go. Uh, we covered a little bit in the last tutorial about how to apply a pattern um, that you know curves around and, and covers the whole surface. Uh, again uh, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit but if, if you haven't watched that last one go ahead and go back and watch it to get up to speed. Um, Plugins that we'll be using today, uh, obviously Grasshopper is a plugin for Rhino. It comes standard with Rhino 6, um, so if you're using that one, you don't even have to worry. It's already there. So we'll be using Grasshopper, and then within Grasshopper, we're using uh, this plugin called Lunchbox. You can download it on the Food for Rhino website. Uh, it's just a grab bag of a bunch of useful different tools. Um, and what I'll be showing you today, we're gonna we're gonna take the pattern that we applied last time to the midsole and we're going to explore one way to manipulate it um, and this is based on uh, a component setup and algorithm that uh, David Rutten uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly this gentleman uh, he is the mind or one of the minds behind Grasshopper uh, anyway I found some helpful stuff from him on the forum and modified a little bit and that's what I'm sharing with you today so, to get started, uh, I've got it all set up already that we've got our pattern, our hexagonal pattern on our midsole here. Let me go ahead and hide our rhino geometry. Um, because of the way we made the surface, we've got these uh, crazy rabbit ears going on, uh, but just ignore those. Uh, we'll get rid of those in kind of post-processing. So, we've got those. We've imported our surface into Grasshopper and used the hex component, hex panels from lunchbox to put this lovely hexagonal pattern all over uh, our midsole. And what we're gonna do is we are going to explore scaling this pattern, making it larger or smaller, uh, but we're gonna explore selectively scaling it, so making it larger in some areas and smaller in other areas. This could be a useful thing, uh, for example, for an outsole, um, if you're trying to provide more traction in certain areas of, of the bottom of the shoe and less traction you know you I don't know use more more rubber or more tread pattern where you need grip and, and then less material where you don't need it um, so that that's going to be kind of our imaginary scenario so the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to decide where we're going to put those points um, so I'm going to go over here to grasshopper select point it's under parameters and then I'm going to say set multiple points. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to pick two points on this shoe where we want it to have more traction. So we're going to say just under the midfoot and just under the heel. So whether you're a heel striker or a forefoot striker, this will have you covered. So you can see we've got those two points set up now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set up uh, an algorithm, an equation, whatever you want to call it, uh, a program in Grasshopper that will cause any of the hexagons around these points to be kept large and we're going to shrink all the other hexagons so we're going to set something up so that the further away from these points the hexagon is the smaller it's going to get so we've got our point set and the first thing we're going to do is grab our scale component over here this is under transform And what this will take is we'll plug our hexagons into it, and we'll plug the centers of our hexagons into it, and then we'll plug in the data to tell it how large or small to make each hexagon. And uh, we're gonna do a little bit of data manipulation. I'm kind of a novice at this, so I don't know that I'll be able to explain it the way, uh, as thoroughly as maybe it needs to, um, but go and, and, you know, if you want to understand it more, go ahead and, and go do your own research on the internet. Um, that's how I've learned what I've learned so far. Uh, there's lots of helpful comments in the Grasshopper forums, uh, lots of YouTube videos. Lynda.com has some good tutorials, like a good basic tutorial 
on how to use Grasshopper. Um, so each of these is going to put out a list. I'll try to show you as much as I understand. Each of these is going to put out a list of data. So these are the coordinates. Each one of these is the coordinates for the first, second, third, and so on hexagons in the pattern. And the cell is going to have the same thing. Uh, but it just is classifying them as a polyline curve. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure uh, we're going to graft all of that data. So that means here's the ungrafted data. And then when we graft it, it's going to show up a little differently. Well, actually, yeah. So we'll grab graft tree, which is here under sets. We'll say graft that. And now, what this has done basically, we'll do param viewer to illustrate it a little bit more. So data in Grasshopper is organized into trees like this. Um, that's just how you keep track of, of big data sets. So before just the regular uh, plain output of this hex hexagon pattern component is data with just one branch. So if we look at that, it's it has one branch on the data tree and that branch contains all of the data. So all we've done is we've said graft which means now instead of all of these hexagons being on the same branch in the data tree and being part of the same list, each of these hexagons, all, how many do we have? All 168 hexagons now have their own data tree branch. Um, the reason we're doing that is because uh, the numbers, the data that we're going to use to scale each of these hexagons is going to be, uh, the number we're going to use is the measured distance between the center of each hexagon and the two points that we created. And so we need to have the data organized so that each of these hexagons has its own little branch on the tree. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, don't worry, just follow along and we'll get there. So we're actually going to graft this twice. We're going to graft this and then we're going to flatten it so we're going to put it all on, uh, put each one of these on its own branch in the data tree, and then we're going to flatten it all back into one branch, and then we're going to graft it one more time. So we have the same uh, amount of data, 168 locally defined values. Uh, they're just structured differently now. We can see that again if we grab param viewer. Now this says data with 168 branches, N1, each branch contains one uh, piece of data. So each one of these hexagons has its own branch. We've got that all set up now the way we need it to be. And we're just going to copy that and do the same thing with the cells. So the cells and the centers of the cells are now set up the way we need them to be. Next, we're going to grab this great component, uh, distance. This just measures the distance between two points. So we're going to take all 168 of these plug it into point A, and then we're going to take our two points over here and plug them into point B. And so that is now measuring 336 uh, locally defined values. So that's now measuring the distance between every one of these points and each of the two points that we set. So that's all good. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is um, if we, so for example, if we said, okay, um, we're plugging, oh, this needs to be grafted as well. Graft, so they match. Both of them are grafted going out, flattened going in, and then grafted a second time. So if we plug this all in, if we plug the hexagons that we want to scale into the geometry node, and we plug the centers that we want each of them to scale around into the centers, if I hide these, you can now see that we have smaller hexagons. So this has gone ahead, factor is the amount that it's scaled by, 0.5. So 
now we have 168 hexagons that are half as large as the 168 hexagons that we started with. Uh, but we don't want to just make them smaller, we want to make some of them smaller and some of them larger. Uh, and that's where this, this distance is going to come in. So if we went ahead and just plugged uh, each of these numerical values into factor, so saying, oh, instead of scaling each one of these by 0.5, go ahead and scale each one of these by its own individual value, which is defined by the distance between our points that we set and the centers of the hexagons. If we do that, let's see what happens. It goes crazy. Uh, because these are not values between, uh, you know, like 1 and 0, you know, 1 being full size, 0 being non-existent. Uh, these are a bunch of crazy big values, big numbers, because they're the numbers of the distance between this hexagon and this hexagon, which, you know, could be 200 millimeters or something. So that's not going to work. What we're going to do to work our way around that is pull up the graph mapper, uh, which is a very awesome tool that I'm just barely learning how to use. It's blank right now. We're going to go in and select a Gaussian graph. So best I can tell what this is doing is uh, it's creating two domains, in one in the x direction and one in the y direction. And if we plug data into this, it will uh, run it through each of these domains and give us uh, an output of manipulated data. Um, so, see if we do that, 336 values go in, 336 values go out, but the outgoing values are just slightly different numerical values. We've either increased them or decreased them based on how we set this graph up. So I'm going to double click on this, and I'm going to set up each domain. Um, there's a, a, like a lower x bound and an upper x bound and a lower y bound and an upper y bound. So the lower of each one, I'm just going to set to 0.1 because we don't want it to scale down to zero because that will confuse the scaling component and it will say, I can't scale something by zero, it doesn't exist. So we're going to say the smallest you can scale it by is 0.1 for both of those. Uh, and I don't, this is just from messing around and looking at David Rutten's uh, algorithm. I don't understand yet why we leave the y at just one, but we're going to leave the y at one but we're going to set the x at some higher number. It could be anywhere from like 20 to 100 to 1,000, just depending on, on uh, how big you want things to scale. So we're just going to go 100. So you can see that's updated now. The domain in the y direction is 0.1 to 1. The domain in the x direction is 0.1 to 100. Um, and then this, I have no idea what this is doing, uh, besides what it says, mass addition. Uh, best I can tell, it's going to take... Uh, all 336 of these values, um, you know, because we have 168 hexagons, right? 168 hexagons, um, but by measuring each, the center of each hexagon, the distance between the center of each hexagon with two points, we've doubled the amount of data that we have, which is 336. So best I can tell, this mass addition is just taking those 336 values and adding them back together so that we get back down to 168 values. And sure enough, if we go over here, 168 values, great. So if we use these remapped values as the scaling factor, we're gonna get a different result. Still looks a little messy, but you can see that around our two points, suddenly now all the hexagons are small, really small, and away from our two points, wow, the hexagons get bigger. So that's kind of cool. We're getting closer to what we need. Um, and how we're going to get closer to what we need is we're just going to mess around with the graph mapper right here. This is going to give us everything we need. So you'll see this change over here as I go about shifting this. Check it out. This is the fun part of Grasshopper. <laughs> this is the responsive real-time modeling of complex geometry. So let's go ahead and move this over. And we'll move this up. Maybe someday I'll understand everything that I'm doing. Until then, um, this is, you know, I've just been experimenting with this all evening, and this is what I've come up with. So we can see now, unfortunately, uh, because of the way we built our surface, we have these crazy artifacted... Uh, 
hexagons out here that get a, a little bit in the way of seeing it. But, oh, you know what we could do? Here's what we'll do. We'll create a little shroud over here so that we don't have to see it. We'll say make a polyline and extrude curve. If this works, I'm gonna feel really smart. There we go. Okay. So this should be much easier to see now. We've blocked out all of those pesky extra ones. So we can see around our two points, again, I'll highlight those. Now we have the hexagons getting really big. So that's great. We're kind of on track for what we need. Uh, we, we said we wanted to make a tread pattern, excuse me, a tread pattern that uh, has larger tread elements uh, where a runner or athlete would need more traction and less where they wouldn't need it. Um, th you know, this is obviously, you're not just gonna say, great, we're done now, there's, there's a lot more work that needs to go into crafting this geometry, but this is the, the basis of it, getting, being able to uh, responsively scale these elements, we've got it all set up now. Let me go ahead and zoom out here. So we'll run through it one more time. We have our surface, we create a bunch of hexagons on it, we can control the number of hexagons. We'll actually up that just a little bit, makes it a little easier to, to work with. And then we have done some rearranging of the data using graft and flatten and graft again. That's a little complicated. If you're not following along with that, that's fine. And then we have measured the distance between each point and the two points that we set. We have uh, used graph mapper to control, uh, to just, uh, I guess, remap these values onto a different set of number values. Again, if that doesn't make sense, that's fine. Just, you know, follow along and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me sometimes. And then we've used that data, we've added it all back together and used it to scale these. So with that all set up, now you can go in and you can say, okay, um, you know, I wanna make these larger and I want their influence to be a little more spread out. You know, there's basically there's just a lot we can do now. The more we, I guess, the taller and broader this bell curve gets, the uh, the more hexagons are going to be influenced, and the shorter and narrower it gets, the fewer hexagons will be influenced. That seems to be the pattern. So you, now you're set to go ahead and play with this, and the great thing is you're not limited to just the pattern that we've set up. Any uh, you can take any geometrical pattern. Uh, you could grab one from Lunchbox. They've got a bunch of different panel ones you can play with. You can create a custom one. And uh, now you have the ability to uh, just manipulate that geometry any way that you want. Um, the great thing too is you can go ahead and move these points around. And this is great. As you move it, the scaling of the hexagons is gonna follow that point. So you could add more points, you could take away points. Um, so yeah, this will get you started and it's a it's a great way to, uh, you know, this, this would take, if you were trying to do this by hand in Rhino or if you were trying to do this in SolidWorks or uh, Fusion 360 or something, this would take forever. And this is where Grasshopper really shines, uh, the ability to manipulate large amounts of data. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, DM me on Instagram. It's at Sam Witt Design, uh, Sam underscore Witt underscore Design. Uh, or just go ahead and comment here in the YouTube comments, and I'll try to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks for following along. See you guys next time. <laughs>